I'm both Tennessee for sure. Okay, okay, cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. So, um, and like we was talking earlier, you said uh, you got into a little bit of trouble down there. Um, I got into trouble down here. Down here, to sit down there. Yeah. Oh, you gotta go sit down there. Sent, I got you got sit down, down, down there. Yeah, my real father, he's um, he lives down there. I ain't gonna tell too much of his story not my right. place, but he lives down there, so I got sent down there with him. Um, when I got in some trouble up here with my folks, and uh, so me going back there was like I ain't been there in over I say seven, seven, eight years. But I went down there, and it was one of them things in life with, like, deja vu. Like, I was a little boy when I was down there. But I'm like, I done seen all this before. You know what I'm saying? And it was weird because I had so many flashbacks. And uh, I came down there as an Emory, so obviously right. I was put on. They knew how I was. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because of the name. Yeah, cause, just because of the last name. You tell them your last name. Literally, you tell them your last name, they're like, oh, you his son or you his grandson. That's how easy it is to connect everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody family. You right. can't even really mess with a girl down there unless you know her. <laughs> You got to know her folks, for real. Y'all might be cousins. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? I got into school. I played the football. I did my thing down there. Um, I soon got out of there. After my uh, junior year, I got out of there. Could have got some stuff, but I managed to stay out the way on some intellectual shit, on some bigger picture shit. So I got back down here where my mom's at, and here I am now. So yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. So um, when you first came down here to Augusta, because right. um, you know you, you say y'all came because your mother moved because right. of the job. I didn't mention the move. We moved a lot. We moved from first Tennessee, Humboldt, Tennessee to Jackson, Jackson, Tennessee to North Carolina first. Oh yeah, it was in North Carolina. Uh -huh. What part? Uh, Wake Forest, right by Raleigh. Okay. Yeah. North Carolina for a couple years. How how you like it up in North Carolina? North Carolina was my first real interaction with the word diverse. It's in my bio because I, I kind of live by that. Given that I've been in so different, so many different locations, so many different areas with so many different people, and I've seen a lot of different things. It was my first time interacting with or going to a class where I saw half whites, and it was weird. Or you might see three foreigners, or it's not all black. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of them first times I seen that, and so um, it gave me my. My first outlook on life, I think I like my first white girl there. Like, it gave me my first outlook on, wow, it's more to life than just these type of people or this type of circumstance. And it was a better house. My mama, throughout my whole life, my mama just elevated. Every house you see us get is better and better. Every car, everywhere we go, it just gets better and better because she's been elevating. Elevating. Yeah. Right, right, her, right. Her uh, nursing. So, right. It was a better area, you know what I'm saying? Less trouble. It was just more of a vibe. I feel like I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I can be a kid here. Cause that was part of my kid year. I can be a kid here, you know what I'm saying? I was just really just enjoying life before any anxiety or depression or any stress of life hit me. It was just, when I think of North Carolina, it's like one of them stages in your life where you just think, wow, like, can I go back there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know how it would be for me now. Cause most people say, who I know from North Carolina say they, when they was there, um, back in the kid years, it was all good, but now it's not, you know what I'm saying? I guess when you grow up, it's just different. But from far as I remember, I had no problem with North Carolina. You know, I was on my way to middle school. When I was in North Carolina, we moved right before I went to middle school. And that's when I moved to uh, Richmond County, like from middle school. Yeah. Right, right. And so when you touched down in Richmond County, so what was like? What was Richmond County like? It's crazy because my mama did not want us in Richmond County. She wanted us to get us in Evans so we'd be in a better environment, knowing right. how her sons are. Right. But I guess the landlord lied to get the money or it was some mishap there. So she, we ended up being in Richmond County, going to Langford Middle School, right? And so knowing I came from uh, North Carolina, and that's, a, like I said, a diverse area, to uh, Richmond County, we're looking at the schools, we see that it's 85% black. I said, okay, we're going back into that environment. Mm -hmm. But you also got to keep in mind, I've been in North Carolina for three, four years. I'm North Carolina, you know, like, uh, I'm looking like a North Carolina, sound, sounding like I'm from North Carolina, you know, right. just because I've been there. So I come to Richmond County and, you know, New school, that, that night before school, you just can't go to sleep. It's like, you want to see what's going to happen. I'm going to school, you know, in your middle school years, thinking you cool and shit. <laughs> so I get in there, man, with some uh, some Adidas on, some some Adidas from Burlington. I thought I was dripping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they was, um, I kept calling them D-Roses because I wanted some D-Roses so bad. Yeah. They was not D-Roses, they were just Adidas. And everybody in Richmond County knew they wasn't D-Roses. So I just had a bad start there, man. I didn't. I looked nothing like them, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't into 
real fancy clothes, and I just wanted a pair of D Roses. I didn't care about none of that. Like I said, I was just being a kid, or sixth grade. Uh, I didn't care about none of that. I come to Richmond County to find out if you go be cool here, you gotta you gotta be dressed. You know what I'm saying? Dress shoes. Um, you gotta be wearing some nice jeans. Some, you know what I'm saying? And it was the, actually the first school I went to where wasn't no dress code. I think. Yeah, this was the first school I went to. Wasn't no dress code, so I was like, okay, you can wear what you want. We we used to have to wear a dress code. Only thing that mattered was your shoes. You had to wear a dress code. So right. I'm not used to that. Your your shoes and your mouthpiece. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, yeah. right? Right. And now right. when you get here, it's like all this um fashion. You gotta look like this, sound like this, act like this. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, that don't stick with me. I don't right. give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care about none of that. Like that still stick. Them elementary days where I had to wear a uniform. And only thing that matter was your shoes and your mouthpiece, your character, how you interact with people. That's still all that matter. I don't even really care about shoes though. It's just I don't care. Like none of that mattered to me at all. all right. it, it never clicked with me. It clicked with my oldest brother. He very much into fashion. He liked buying clothes. Right. I liked it by him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own thing. It just everybody know about me. It never clicked with me right. at all. Like right. fashion, you got to look a certain way, dress a certain way. That literally, when I tell you that hit me when I got to middle school, when I moved down to Richmond County, it literally hit me like. You gotta actually dress right. like drip or dress like this dress person. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. The rappers they dress like you gotta dress like that rapper to yeah. I never yeah. rocked with it. Middle school, of course, I adapted, you know what I'm saying? Start wanting more stuff. I ain't have a mind of my own for real. I'm right. in middle school. So I adapted, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I need some clothes if I'm even have friends here. That's right. how it got to that point. Cause I'm used to having so many friends being a cool person. Now it's like, damn, you just a lame. She didn't hit with me. <laughs> so um yeah, so I got into clothes and all that. Uh, my big brother started dressing because he was in high school in ARC. And I used to steal his clothes and wear them to school when he didn't know. Uh, I got up before him, so I used to take his clothes before he went to school. He'll wake up, be mad. Be mad. And my brother be fighting because I just wanted to be cool for a minute, you know. Yeah. And um, since grade year, I remember it was terrible. Like I, It's like you couldn't even talk to somebody. Like They had this such a opinion about you and then I was immature at that at a sixth grade mind I was immature you know so only thing I was known for sixth grade was rapping which is so weird sixth grade only way I found the way out of that hole of just damn he lame is rap rap when people found out to rap it was kind of like okay he can rap but he's still weird you know what I'm saying (laughs) he can rap and then (laughs) seventh grade year came by um in middle school I kept rapping, I kept rapping, you know what I'm saying? Showing people around, just rapping in class and stuff like that. Kind of changed for me seventh grade, you know, over the summer. I said, okay, time to tighten up, you know what I'm saying? Kept my hair cut, had my mama, uh, I read a, I read a psychology book. My mama made me read a, she didn't make me, she offered $100 for me to read a whole psychology book. Cause I didn't like, I liked reading, but I stopped. Like reading from elementary school to middle school, I stopped liking reading. Like I used to love reading, but then I stopped doing it. She was wondering why. So she said, read the psychology book. I give you a hundred dollars. That changed my whole life. That psychology book. Even how I act now or how I look at people when I just talk, how right. I read people. Sometimes I just right. be quiet. Right. That psychology book still right now is some stuff that right. just changed about my whole life. So I read the book, got a hundred dollars. With that hundred dollars, I paid my cousin for some Timberland boots. Cause I just, Eric Timberland Boots was cool. And then yeah, yeah, I didn't it was no cool shoes. back then. Yeah, yeah. And the other 50 I gave to my mama, she went to, went half with me and bought me some Air Forces. So I came back with that and you know, it was, it was cool. Oh, you like, came back straight. Yeah, I came back straight. It was like, <laughs> hey, he cool, he cool, yeah. he cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got my, um, my first middle school girlfriend and stuff like that. So I started experiencing, you know, just being a, being a, in the, yeah, in the, being a down natural here. dude. Like I just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Vibing so cool. So it was like, so it was like down here in Augusta to be established, you gotta, Dress fresh, mm-hmm. and then yeah. get a girlfriend from down here. Up, uh, does she have to be popular? Somewhat. At that it, time, yes. Right now, me, no. So, so let me ask you a question in this school. Yeah. Is it you know is it is it true that if you if you date a cool girl, you instantly become cool, like the Cardi Offset type thing? Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. If you date a cool girl, of course your name's gonna pop up. You're gonna be seen if she has a good following somewhere and you can yeah. post it with her. Of course you're gonna be you just go, yo, 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 your rate gonna go, go up. up. <laughs> but um, for me though, in middle school it was try to find a cool girl. I tried to find a cool girl and got a hold of one in middle school. Right. But all this changed when I hit the high school and actually went through life, grew up. Yeah. That stuff that I remember from my childhood where none of this shit mattered came right back, like I said. So Right. When they got to high school, I tried to get, ninth grade year, I tried to get put on with a cool girl, I think. But 
after that summer of ninth grade, and I just, I don't know, things just hit different. I came back just on some different shit. Like, it wasn't, I didn't give a fuck about none of that. I really didn't. Right. I was focused on solely on getting through high school because I was struggling with my grades, on life problems, you know what I'm saying, household problems that I was dealing with. Because I told you this, this, the trouble I get in leads, on, leads me to getting sent back to Humboldt. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I had too much to deal with to think about dating a cool girl, dressing nice. And this was, I've been in dress like, dressing how we wanted, no dress code for the past five years. So I'm like, bro, it don't even, <laughs> it don't matter now. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I came to a school where it's mainly whites. And let me tell you something about a mainly white school. They, If you a new black kid, they go look at you. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, don't yeah, even yeah, dress yeah. nice. You ain't got to do it. They gonna look at you. And black. they knew I wasn't, they could tell I wasn't from there. So they're going to look at you regardless. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> when I got to high school, and we came as a trio too, three brothers who all look alike, we're going to get looked at. You know what I'm saying? I went through that phase where I was dressing exotic. You know what I'm saying? It was like on some, like some magazine shit. Like I didn't care. If I would like that, I wore it. Not mm. everybody liked it. People had their opinions. People were telling me straight in my face that it was ugly. I didn't give a fuck at all. <laughs> I swear I didn't. You could ask anybody from the all right. school I went to. I didn't care. I used to wear whatever came to my mind. If it went together to me, I used to wear it. Yeah. Right? When I got sent to Humboldt, that's when all that changed. My real father. Just basically being in the environment changes you. You know what right. I'm saying? And I was still growing. Now, when you become a man, you know what I'm saying? Or you 25 or 30. Now, you can go to any environment now. You should stay who you are because you already been through life and know this is right. who I want to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when you growing up, your brain don't develop to what? Me and brains don't develop to what? Like 20, 20, 20, oh, 20 about something. 20, 25. My maybe, brain ain't developed yet. You can change just yeah, like this. You can change. That's why you see people one way, one summer, they come back from the summer, they're a different person. Right. Why you changed up? They didn't change up. They doing a natural human phase. They change. Right. So, of course, when I went to Humboldt, they, that shit ain't sliding like I told you. Yeah. What the fuck? It's like a metamorphosis. It's like, yeah. you know, you change like a, you know, like a butterfly. Or, you know, sure. you change like you change hey, you know what's your crazy? Form. You know what's crazy that I'm not peeping until right now? Back in, when I went back to Humble, it was a dress code again. It kind of, I feel like that was a representation for me going back to my childhood self where I didn't give a fuck about none of that. Right. Because when I went back to Humble, there was no dressing. They had a dress code again, like when I, when I was little. So I went from dressing how I want to for the past five years, getting sent to Humble, Tennessee. And there's a dress code. So yeah, nothing, yeah. really nothing mattered except for your character, your mouthpiece. If you was going to get with a girl, it was going to have to be by your mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you played football or something, which yeah. I did. You know what I'm saying? I had a... Um, Can they also even the field out a lot? Yeah. Because sure. it's like, if everybody, that's one thing that uh, you go to school, you got to wear uniforms. Mm -hmm. Everybody wearing the same shit. Same shit. It's like you said, it's all about, now it's all about your talk game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ain't no, you gotta be interesting. Yeah, there's no, um, right. There's no, what's your talents? What do you do? What's your, um, what's your goals? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Childish shit don't slide. You in a uniform, bro. Your clothes not finna make up for your childish side. If right. you childish, that's finna come out so bold that because they ain't got out. shit else to look for, but your, like, you childish as hell. That's not finna <laughs> slide. That, um, the, um, even the, the motherfuckers up here who wanna be so gangsta, gangsta like. Yeah. That shit not gonna slide. You know yeah. what I'm saying? At the end of the day, bro, you can sag your pants, you can do all that, but at the end of the day, bro, that's not gonna slide on the girl unless you show her that for real. Some, right. some, now don't get me wrong, some females like that side. You know what I'm saying? But they not gonna believe that in the school and you got a uniform on, my right. boy. You got yeah, a, yeah, you got yeah. a collar shirt on and a khaki and you yeah. think they finna believe you a thug. Why would they care right now? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You show them that in your lifestyle or right. like my cousin. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but like my cousin, or you steady skip, skip a school when people know about you, then yeah, okay. Right. Then they we know, know this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he not cap He not even he, here. He about that. You know what I'm saying? He not even here. Yeah, yeah. You at school every day, your college straight man, get your education and get on, man. Right, this, right. Shit ain't, <laughs> this shit ain't for you. Can't have bro. it both ways. <laughs> nah, bro. So none of that shit matter, bro. And that's what I, that's how I picture, that's how I would picture my utopia. My utopia would be a world where none of that shit matter. Like, bro, at the end of the day, you human, I'm human. Maybe you can afford some clothes that I can't, or maybe I can afford some clothes that you can't. Right. At the end of the day, none of that shit matter. Y'all gotta die. Type shit. So, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. That's how I think me just now, like literally just now realizing, I think that's what, that was a representation of bringing me back to reality. Right. And then plus, I'm in a different environment. It's the summer. I'm in the heat. I'm construction work 12 hours a day, five days a week. I have no time for shit. You know what I'm saying? At that, did not get paid. You know what I'm saying? This right. is basically just slaving for me. Shit was a, 
it was a sad time for me, but at the same time, it was just a realization. And after I got into trouble, I got in and, um, down here, I feel like I needed that. Like, I didn't like my mama for sitting me down there at the time. I always loved my mama to death, but at that time, I was not on good terms of sitting me down there. But once I went through the phase, like I said, it's just a growing process. Yeah. Went through the phase, grew, understood what she did and why she did it. Why she did Came it. back in a better mindset. Yeah, I done got in some trouble again down here, but at the same time, I'm where I'm at now. I done graduated. I done got into college. I'm on my music shit. I'm becoming a man. I don't think, you know what I'm saying? That's a failure at all. I feel like every part of my life made me who I become today. So, yeah. Right. Then as artists, man, you know, as musicians, musicians got to go through phases. You got to go through yeah, trauma. So. You got to go through drama. Or you ain't got nothing to write you gotta about. Go, you, ain't got no, you ain't got nothing to, you ain't got nothing to write about. So you got you to gotta always use that as, you know, as writing fuel right. and, and stuff like that. So the most, the more trouble you go through, the better songs you have. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and then even with the, uh, going back to the fashion, like, uh, the biggest, the biggest iconic people always stood out because they always pushed outside of the boundaries. Right. The Lady Gagas, Andre 3000, yep. the the um, Prince, Michael Jackson, like everybody, you know, the ones like that, they they used to call them weird. Yeah, for sure. But their uniform is iconic now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, That's how it go. People dressing like them for Halloween and stuff like that. So That's how it go. So, yeah, most definitely, man. So... Who was your influences, you know, getting into music? Like you said, sixth grade, you was doing, um, at, when you, you, do you remember who your influences are? I do. At, um, at sixth grade? I got into music, purely just music. It started with rap, of course. I soon spent outside of that, tried to teach myself to sing more and more every day. But the reason I even got into music, even though I have ups and downs with this man, I still got to show my love and support to him and um, give my regards to him because I got into music because of my stepdad. Mm-hmm. My mama married him. He brought his uh, Pro Tools kid over. I think he was using FL. Oh, so he was in music? Yeah, not Pro Tools, FL Studio. He was using FL Studio. Just download the app, you know, just making beats. Oh, but so he made, he, he made beats? Uh-huh. But okay. we knew he rapped, though. Like, another thing about the boat, he from the boat, too. You know what I'm saying? That's where he grew up at. So another thing about the boat, they know him, too. Like, I, I done seen him take me back down to the boat, and he's shaking up people there like they've been there. You know, like... Like, they was just talking. Like, they know him, too. He was rapping. He started making a buzz in the boat, too. So he just grew up, you know what I'm saying, caught a felony, his story. You know what I'm saying? He is where he at now, and he married my mother. mother and um, he was doing uh, beats in the house and just rapping and just rapping. And I just caught on, man. I just sat down one day. I just wrote me a little rap. You know what I'm saying? Rapped it to him. I was raised in a Christian home. Regardless mm-hmm. of everything I've been through, they, it's a Christian home. So my first rap was a gospel rap. I wrote my first rap, showed it to my family. My brothers laughed at me. My two older brothers, they laughed at me. And this not to uh, down them or nothing. It didn't bother me. They just laughed at me because, like, I was little. You know what I'm saying? This is something new. Like, ain't like we've been doing this brand new, just a rap. I came over. Right. And I remember my uh, my dad looked at me. My stepdad, I call him dad, though. So my dad looked at me, and he he was like, I don't know why y'all laughing. That's a good start. That's what he said to me. I remember. I never forget that on my first rap. I don't even remember how the rap went. I just remember rapping it to and my then. brothers on the couch like a quick flash. Rapping it to my brothers on the couch. He's sitting on the couch. He looked at them laughing. He said, I don't know why y'all laughing. That's a good start. He said, finish. So I finished. So we wrote my uh first actual song that I would do with my brothers. Once I start rapping, my brothers got into it too. My uh my older brother Chaos and my other brother Jay, R-I-N Chaos, R-I-N Jay. I can get at them. So um, they got into it too after me. Mm-hmm. So I say about, about a month later after I started rapping, my brother started rapping. It wasn't like it was too far apart. I was just like the spark who said, okay, we rapping now. So we did a song together, Chris's song together called Keep On Blessing Him, right? I remember how that went weird. My uh, stepdad made the hook. They're like, keep on blessing him. And we just rapped three parts to it. And we kind of got the basis of a song for the first time ever. Okay. So, yeah, he's why I got into rap. He taught me the 16 bars on a song. He taught me the, the, the making of a song. 16 bars, a hook, 16 bars, a hook. You know, the traditional basis of rap music. And I got better throughout uh, the years with him. He was teaching me a lot. Very good rapper. I can't knock him at all. It's so you step K- out. Yeah. yeah. Cadences, flows, lyrics, tongue twisting. He could do it. So... I saw that and I just immediately, got, it's like, I can't even remember a time before me. Like, before I started rapping, I don't remember what I was doing. 
like for a hobby. I knew I always drew, I was drawing, but like I just can't remember life for real. It's like right. everything's a blur. But after music, it seems like I remember stuff. You know right. what I'm saying? So, like I said, we wasn't allowed to listen to a lot of a lot of music living in the Christian home. But I got away sometimes, and I got on YouTube, and I discovered J Cole. You know what I'm saying? And J Cole is the li- the lyrics part of me where I use intricate flows like words that just rhyme together perfectly. Like um, I got a um, like my lemon pepper freestyle. If you look at my Instagram, like my rhyming schemes. Like this is something music like. Like, you got to know this. So, like, I can put together stuff like, okay, I say deep thoughts, deep dedication. Let me set a vibe. Sea salt and sweet meditation. Let me get a rise. Like, treat tops and sweet sex relations. A weed medication for my sleep deprivation. Stuff like that that go perfectly together. It's like it's like you controlling it, you know. Right. I saw that from him. He actually was rapping a video. I don't even remember. But it looked like like with his hands, he was rapping. It was like he was putting the words together. Putting words together. And that like really, yeah, that really stuck with me. And then I, um, a lot of people don't know, futuristic, mm. rapping ain't futuristic. Only reason why I started rapping fast, I used to rap slow because my stepdad taught me just growing up, take your time, you ain't got a tongue twist, just on some Tupac shit, like just, right. I'm with the bull, like just rapping straight, you know, yeah. cadence, flow, just, cadence flow, right. it's yeah. steady, people can understand it. I saw futuristic do a video, a nerd can rap, nerd that raps or something. And I just thought I was trash as fuck. I'm looking at this man tongue twisting. I'm like, but I cannot do that. You know what I'm saying? So he the reason I started tongue twisting in the first place. He the reason I started tongue twisting in the first place. So I'm tongue twisting. I wrote my first song tongue twisting and I fell in love with it. That's why I start rapping really fast sometimes. And with all them different type of rappers I listen to who tongue twisted, rap slow, Tupac, Rap the real, have fun with they rapping. I put it all at one, mm-hmm. and it makes a song like I just released, Emery, where I can rap fast, slow down rapping. I can sing a little, and when it comes to the melodies, because <clears throat> if you remember back in rap, it wasn't a lot of melodies. You know what I'm saying? It was. It was just at hard all, rap. Just hard rapping. So that's what the era I grew in, just hard rapping, where I was just listening to hard rap. Drake introduced the melodies, kind of to me. Mm-hmm. I I heard Drake just singing. I'm like. Never heard a rapper really sing like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're, uh, so you're, you never listened to Bone Thugs and Harmony? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, what's the song? Crossroads? They listened yeah, to Bone yeah, Thugs and Harmony was like, yeah, yeah. They so was they like, like some of the too. early groups that started that trend. Yeah, see, I forgot, forgot all about yeah. them. Yeah, they, yeah, they definitely started. They was the pioneers that. of that. Yeah, they definitely started that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I just didn't listen to their whole, like, the whole catalog. I just lost to listen to Crossroads and, uh, another song by First of the Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're hits. They're I can't hits. say. Yeah, I won't sit here and lie. Say it was yeah. into them, into them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be listening like really deep to. Cause a lot of people, they'll judge a group or artist yeah. off their main song. Right. That's why a main song sometimes be very important yeah. because if it if it's not too catchy enough where people want to go dive into your catalog, right. you know. Yeah. You, so um. Yeah. True. So when he got to melody, I didn't. I used to always do a little melody in my song because of Drake. I used to try to do melodies. Never could really sing. Right. I just do a melody in my song. Something that's like, I'm rapping, but you can kind of hear the singing side. Right. It's a little melody. So um, it's this new age that really got me into music. Because like I said, I wasn't really allowed to listen to any other music than gospel. Right. When I say J. Cole and them, I had to sneak off to do this. Like, oh, yeah, it's not like off. I was on that shit every day. Right. Probably once a week. And it just influenced me because I saw a different side. I was listening to Lecrae, like gospel rap, Lecrae, KB and stuff. When it came to... You know what I'm saying? Other, other genres, and J Cole type stuff. I was listening to them probably four hours out the week. I didn't, I didn't get a lot of them. So when I saw it, it's like I got addicted to it. Right. It's you know it's something like you can't have, but right. when you can't have something, you really want it. You're, like, yeah, you gonna pay so more I was attention to it. Sneaking off the watch, and then I just pay more attention to them. All right. When it comes to the melodies that really happened in these recent years, when I got a free range to listen to whatever I want to listen to, the Juice Worlds. I gotta give props to Uzi. You know, just who really put melody in their songs. Like, their songs became a melodic track other than a hardcore just rap track. But I never left the hardcore rap track. I still got songs like that, but I didn't do a whole lot of more melody in myself. And I tried to teach myself how to sing. Rod Wave. <laughs> I'm not for the same Rod Wave yourself. came out, and I'm just walking around the house singing his notes. Like, music runs through my brain 24-7. Every every day it's a note. I'm humming. My coworkers know. My household know. My school know. I'm just humming something in my head. It's a new melody. I can never run out of melodies. It's a new melody every day. 
it's consistently. I've been doing this since I literally was six. Like, there's no stopping it. So right away came out, I'm just singing his songs and practice hitting his notes. Um, I've always been into other genres, too. Like, I, I listen to Adele. I listen to Sam Smith. Okay. I listen to Maroon 5. Like, Oh, Adam Levine? Yeah, I listen to 21 Pilots. Like, it's not just rap. That's what people don't understand. Like, it's not just rap. I feel like if an artist can do that and put them all in one, his track is going to be beautiful. I'm practicing hitting their notes. I'm even in, by myself, not around people, trying to hit notes of Adele. Because if you try to hit a higher note that you can't hit and keep trying to try, one day you go get the note. You're going to get that note, yeah. yeah. So I put that all together that. over the recent years, and it just came out as a good singing voice. Now I can have a studio singing voice. Now I know I can rap because I've been rapping all my life. Now I can tongue twist. Now I can slow it down. I can change my cadence. I can change my flow. You're not going to hear the same flow and make a good track each and every time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to lyrics, like I said, J. Cole, stuff, people like that. It just expand your vocabulary. Right. You know more words, you got more words to rhyme with. You so gotta just, read, watch, watch yeah. a movie, watch, oh, you yeah, know, so. you gotta spread, you know, you gotta open your I see your a mind. word I don't know, I, I try to remember. I took a picture of something because I'm like, okay, that rhyme was something I right. know. And I'm be thinking of it one time, I'm like, oh, that rhyme perfectly. Right. No one wants to hear you say, I got a mat. Splat. Like, of course. Splat, you know crack, what I'm saying? That, oh, fat. Like, come on. Yeah. Now, if you can rhyme with, throw another word in there, exact. Or you know what I'm saying? Attract, interact, yeah. and put it in your song. It was different. That's like, okay, he got some he got some real talent with yeah. him. You know, this is not just something he's doing for fun. Yeah. You could tell the difference between you can tell the, you can tell a big difference. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it up because you actually can tell a big difference. You could tell how creative a person's mind is yeah. and how well tuned there is. Cause some people write, mm. write and they fire. And some right. people off top fire. Yeah. Then you have some people that just punch. Punch line, line for line, line for line, like the baby do. Yeah, know. line for line. Uh -huh. So, and then, but I feel like if, if you're punching for line to line, which a lot of artists are doing that right. now, that's a, that's the trend. You got to, which is a trend. Yeah, you got to have a substance with that though, right? Because a lot of them would be like, "I'm fucking your chick, getting yeah. this rich." Yeah, you know what then I'm getting this money to get back to the bricks. Yeah, like simple we as that. Yeah, that's that's the goal for my music. Right. I want you to listen to my music, and if I use the word, if I use the word sauce in my song, in ten different songs, I don't want you to know the next word I'm finna rhyme with. I don't want <laughs> right, you to think right, it's gonna right. be boss or cost. Yeah. I want you to think it's gonna be exhaust. Exhaust. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or, uh, right. or just another word that yeah. rhymes with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That word. I don't want you to know what's next. I don't and want next, you to know right. the next flow I'm finna use. I don't want you to know what to expect. That's why every track I do, I can change my voice too. Like, it's very. It's complex. Like, my music is complex. You're never going to know what's going to happen next. Right. And see, that's what I like to hear in music. It's just like, even with like music these days, I'm a producer. I make beats. So it's like, when I hear other people's songs, you can just tell. If you hear a pair, you can hear somebody's song for the first time. You know when the beat go out, when the beat's going to come back in. Right, right. Because they always have that little break mm -hmm. where, you know, the beat go off. They go crazy for that one little line. Because and then they catch that beat back in. Yeah. But you hear that a lot. Right, you do hear a lot. Yeah, a lot. And that's why you got a lot of songs on your playlist right now where you be like, it just came out. And you posting on your uh, your social site saying, I need new music. You know what I'm saying? It's artists out there who, now this is what makes me upset though. It's artists out there who make these type this type of music and you'll never get tired of it. But they barely release music. <laughs> like, right. them artists, they really don't release music. The Kendra right. Lamars, the right. Coles Hill released the album and disappear. Right. Even... I'm not saying when it comes to rap, but just a different type of music. Playboy Cardi makes totally different music. You don't hear no music like his. He don't, he don't barely drop music. You know what I'm saying? Rod Wave will come and drop music for a little bit and dip. So, yes, you can run out of you can run out of songs because you got 100 songs that you just added on your playlist in the past two weeks, but they're all giving you the same, same vibe. Same vibe. Same you know vibe. And it's a trend because yeah. when, you with, when you're with people and you want to hear that type of stuff, like, okay, okay. But when it really comes down to music, music, yeah. you not it's gonna it's gonna yeah. get tiring. You're not gonna play that. Even time. Time. Just imagine listening to Rod Wave, right. like you got a Rod Wave album, you gotta drive the California road right. trip. That's a depressing ass drive, yeah. over, right? <laughs> depressing ass drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's depressing as it is. <laughs> yeah, what it is. I you know, but that's what people like to hear. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? You know, so and then if you listen to Migos. That's right. a lit ass drive. Yeah. You're gonna be tired as hell by the time you get to them <laughs> get outside of Nebraska. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But people have their vibe. Yeah, you need certain, different type you of You need music. different type, need. type of vibe. Right. See, you 
It's all other Migos. This ain't no disrespect to Migos. But you know what's coming with Migos. Right, pretty much. You know what's coming. Yeah. You finna have some trap. You finna get lit. Right. That's okay. Yeah, you don't have okay. to be... This is not me saying if you don't have diverse music, then right. stop music. No, because they blew up and they're still making that type of music. And it's still bumping. I still bump them. You got them type of vibes. Some people don't like making music so you can get sad to or you can think. Some people like making music so let's have fun. You got one life type stuff, which is okay. But I'm saying, mm -hmm. if you could take that vibe and that per a whole different person, two different vibes out of two different people and put it in one person, I feel like that person is it. Like, I can take... Real rap, I can take fun rap, I can take melodies, I can take somber songs, I can take songs that touch on anxiety, I can take songs that touch on my lifestyle, and I can put them in one person. He's never going to run out of content. Right. He's never going to run out of content. You see the, uh, the lifespan of a rapper, not lifespan, the um, career span of a rapper. Mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. 10, 15 years. On a good, on a good one. Uh, yes, yes, if it goes good. Song, yeah. now three, if you, song three, five. Right. Now, if you... Even with three to five. Now, if you, I could take your spin, because you've been making that type of music for five years. Now you're done, because we're tired of it. I can take your music. That's five, span, five years on mine. I can take his music, who he, totally different artist, but his span of five years. I got 10 years. I can take, I'm never going to run out of content. Right. I'll be here forever, because right. I can make music and it's never going to stop. You're going to stop. You're not going to know what to expect. You don't know if it's going to be melody. I can, I can change genres. You're not going to, it's a, the, the whole word in music is just a very, intricate, complex, but important thing to me. Like, yeah. it's something that runs through my brain 24-7. Right. It's not going to end. Right. Because it's like your type of mindset, the type of mindset that you have will get you arenas, yeah. stadium so, crowds. Stadiums. That's what, yeah. So compared to, you know, festivals, you yeah, know, sure. regular stuff like that. And I be trying to explain people, it's like, it's a different, it's different tiers when it comes to artists, same way mm -hmm. as it, like a sports player. Right. You play basketball. You know, you got your low, your, like, I say, like, your C, C, C rated rap stars, like, right. uh, the Bootsies, right. the Plies, you know, different people like mm -hmm. that, the, you know, right there at the bottom. Then at the middle, you got the ones that's in the middle, mm -hmm. that's like your, uh, your little babies, right. uh, your stuff like that. Then you got the top tiers. The Drakes. Yeah, you can't. You can go. <laughs> you can go across overseas and they know. Like, you go overseas yeah. today. You know the Adele's and the Bruno Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Those are the top tier. The Beyonces right. and stuff like that. Those like packed arenas right. and stuff and it's like that. It's fine if you want to. You know, in a lot of rappers' case, black people be put in such a fucked up situation. Uh, start on life. Right. If you, if rap take you there, I'm definitely would never knock that. Right. Even if you don't have all the talents that I'm naming or you can't do all the stuff that I'm naming, it's cool. If you can make a record and a hundred thousand people click on it, I wouldn't tell you to stop. You know what I'm saying? That's something. Even if it's a record where you just talking about, even if it's a record where they down and you just talking about, you know what I'm saying? Your lifestyle, having fun, women, drugs. If that's what you do, that's what you grew up on. Okay, you speak on that, it's sending you 100,000 plays. Yes, you go influence the youth. Yes, you go influence the world if you make it big by that music. And I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. But why would a human being stop? Like, you telling me I'm in a fucked up situation? I mm. might not graduate high school. My mama's stressing. My brother's sick. Like, stuff like that. Mm. I, I live in, like, say if a, a kid from the boat, my hometown, and they making it off rapping. They not going to stop no matter what the fuck they talking about. If right. you listening to it. They ain't finna stop, and I really can't blame you. Can't nobody can blame that. They not finna stop. Right. You got put in a good situation where you was born into a good life, good family. They go fund you. Right. They go push you. Right. You go be a doctor. You go be a lawyer. Cool, right. and that's good for you. Right. But you go be a doctor, a lawyer, or a media person, and you go grow up and knock someone who like me, right. who came from this environment and had to do this to make it and talk about these type of stuff. Right. So if you're making records like that, of course I'm gonna have my opinion because I'm a music. I'm a music person. I love yeah, music. I love music. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I be into music. So of course I'm have my opinion on it. But that's not me saying knocking you. It's a job like any other job. Right. You may not think I work at Firehouse Subs right now. I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm on the ground. I work at Firehouse Subs right now. You might think somebody at Firehouse Subs make a better sub. Me. It's a job. Right. We both getting money. We both getting money. We both getting paid. Right. It's a job. You know what I'm saying? Right. But at the end of the day, when it comes to just the music thing, the reason why I think that this is the path for me because just nobody gets this when I'm talking about like how, how deep music goes. 
know what I'm saying, what it really takes to make a project. Right. I ain't put out a project in three years. Like, I put out a SoundCloud project, I got about 8,000 views when I was a, a freshman. But um, when I got a mind of my own and I said, okay, I know what I really need to do to make music, I ain't dropped a project for so long. And people know I rap. I done performed in front of my whole school. I done performed at um, showcases. I done performed downtown Augusta, Sochi Sounds. And you would think, oh, he got a song out. I'd had nothing out. <laughs> These were just songs I was performing. The songs you got. You know songs you got in the, got in the chamber. Yeah. But when it came to releasing the song, I know the process. I'm trying to understand the business. My uh, my dad helps me with that. I'm trying to understand the business. Like I'm trying to understand the moves to take, the marketing. I want everything. Right. To you want to be right. right. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't want to be where it's just you just dropping out content and it just, I call it just, Work, you know, worthless content. Yeah, you know, sure. you got people that just drop stuff, drop videos, back to back yeah. to back to back to back. Not getting enough marketing, branding behind it, and it's not spreading enough. It's not covering enough ground. Yeah, for sure. Because if you if you shoot a video and it only go as far as Evans, it don't go outside of Evans. That's a failure. That's a failure. Yep. It's a failure. Like your video is supposed to go out. It's supposed to be global, international mm-hmm. type thing, so people can watch it. But people will get like a thousand views and just quit. Yeah. <laughs> just quit. Yeah, I was having a conversation with my um my dad the other day, and he was telling me he always one thing about him he always um ups and downs with him like man not perfect I'm not perfect we've been at it before but right. one thing about him that when it comes to music he go he know my worth he go tell me if I can do better you know so I told him my um uh, I told him my strings for the past three days and I keep in mind I'm an independent artist you know what I'm saying I don't have no really no team no backup everything funny by me you know what I'm saying I'm gonna give you the real. Everything funny about me. I work a nine to five to fund my music. Right. If I do a video, I pay for it through my nine to five. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't even have a car. If I get here, it's Uber. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm making my way. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm coming from something. So, in my opinion, the streams I got in the first three days of my release, 2500 was okay for me. Apple on Spotify without the uh, without the music music video being released that's coming this Saturday, right? right. So I'm expecting that to do big. But just the streams, letting everybody know about it, 2,503 days, I was like, okay, I'm in good spirits. He looked at me straight up and said, no, nah, you need, you, that ain't good, do better. Like, And we had a big discussion about it. But I had to understand what he said. At first, I was turned the blind eye to it. But you got to understand what somebody's saying, especially somebody been in the music business. Like, yeah, I can do better. It's a good song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if he knows it's a good music, he looking at me telling me, I'm, when your peers telling you it's a good song, it may be a good song. It may not, because they lie. Yeah. If somebody who in music, who bluntly honest with you, tell you it's a good song, it's a good song. He told me it's a good song. That's why he can tell me it's not a good marketing process. You can do better. Stuff like that is right. what's going to make me go. Make you go, yeah. Because like when you hear stuff like that, it's like, okay, he understand. He understand that it's a good song. Good. Yeah. But he also telling me, I've been feeling good about the song for the past three days. And I come home to him telling me, uh-uh. That's just like a rule, like... Oh, right. and you, you get you get in your defensive mode. Yeah, role. and everybody's been telling you it's a good song. Right. People blowing your phone up. People recording videos. People sharing it, and it's like, oh yeah, this 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 booming around the city. And then he, you right. come home to this, and he like, uh, dude. it's like wow. It's right. like you preparing something, hard working for it, mm-hmm. thinking you did the best you can, presenting it to your boss. Oh, we can't accept this. We right. don't like. It. You know what I'm saying? Right. So stuff like that. I've been I've been raised with that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a difference if somebody telling you that one or two times. I've been raised with that. Yeah. That's go yeah. stuff like that gonna take me to the next level. That's why I'm not gonna stop. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. First release right now, beginning of the summer. Just graduated high school. I'm going to a music college. It's a plan here. It's not just reckless, just out of the air dropping music, trying to do music because I see other people doing it. Right. Been at it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's hard to see that because you got so many artists now who just picked up a mic because. They seen somebody from their hood making. Yeah, they heard their they, they you know homeboy doing. Oh, yeah, so like, oh shit, I, he ain't no different than me. He ain't no I know me. I can do. He do right. It, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't that. It look. It can look like that because any rapper now that come out probably been doing music since they was three years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Since yeah. since the Migo phase, right. the Uzi phase, where this ain't no first. You know, remember the time where rapping looked hard, like mm-hmm. rapping looked like. Dang, bro, how you come up with that? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. How you put them lyrics together? Right. It didn't look hard when artists who came out not knocking them. They came out with melodies or another form of music that looked like rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? Might put through some rap in there to make it a rap genre. Or talked about stuff that was stuff that rap talked about. Gangster right. rap. But if you put gangster rap in a melodic form, you can't call it rap. You may can call it hip hop. Right. But the genre rap, rapping is not melodic. All the time, yeah. hip hop is melody. You hip-hop, can put you can put melody. Rap is a rap. rap you know what I'm saying? Rap, right. 
Yes, it's hardcore is right. a rap. You know what I'm saying? Right. Rap it used to look hard. Cause you had to actually put some thought into it, some time. What you seen on the video, psychological, what you seen rappers doing, the J. Cole's, the Jay Z's, you saw them in the studio working hours and hours on a track, and you like, oh I'm not doing I can't do that. You right. know what I'm saying? Look like drawing a picture, like, I can't do that. You know what, right. what I'm saying? Or a real, real life job that you couldn't do. Now right. it look like something anybody could do, so it's hard to separate the fake from the real, but mm-hmm. this is a real one. Like right. music for real, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's been there, it's go stay. Music for real. Yeah, yeah, man. Music for real. Shit, so. Most definitely, most definitely, man. So, man, all right. So, before we slide off on new event, my man, um, how can they get in contact with you? And um, is there any love you want to shout out? Um, I just started a um Facebook and a Twitter. Um, Cause I never had Facebook or Twitter. Really wasn't into social media. But um, you are really you are into social. Yeah, media? I wasn't into social media. I don't think I had an Instagram. My sister put me on Instagram about three years ago, and that's something I ever used. But the Instagram is what's popping. You go to my Instagram, it's gonna be R Y N underscore Emery. Yeah, R Y N underscore Emery. <clears throat> so that's gonna be the Instagram. I'm telling you, I just created this Facebook and Twitter probably three days ago. So I literally gotta go find it. But um. I'm pretty sure it's R-I-N Emery on everything, but hey. So, yeah, Instagram, R-I-N underscore Emery. If you stay tuned there, that's where I really post my big content. Pictures from my video, the video that's dropping this Saturday. It's going to be um there. It's the name of the song? Emery. The Emery. name of the song is called Emery. Emery. I'm presenting myself for my first single. Emery, it's a song explaining my life. What Who I've been shot going it? Through. Uh, saturated pictures. Okay. Yeah. So y'all hit him up. He's so fire. Like saturated, saturated pictures. pictures. He, he worked with you. He on wheels. Good dude. Not too. He worked with your budget. Saturated pictures will get you done right. So y'all definitely get at him. That's saturated. S A T U R A T E D pictures. pictures. So, yeah. Pictures. Okay. He's down in Augusta. Yeah. Well, he, he don't stay in Augusta, but he down. Here. Okay. Like, you won't even know he don't stay here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He he down. Here. Okay. But yeah, Facebook. Um. I think Facebook is just Kali Emery, my first name, Kali, K-H-A-L-I, Emery. And Twitter is definitely R-I-N, Emery. So, y'all get at them pages. Y'all stay tuned with me, man. It's going to be a lot of stuff coming this summer. I got a promotion party down there at Hexaba this Saturday for my music videos. It's going to be super deep. I'm going to pop up, do a performance there. I ain't really into parties. I'm just going to perform, let y'all have fun. I'm going to dip. But, yeah, I got a performance party this Saturday. Y'all can pop after that. The video drop at 3. The performance party start at 9 in Hexaba. So, yeah, we got a lot of big stuff coming this summer. Y'all stay tuned. Any love you want to shout out? Um, love. Um, Any love? For shit show. Y'all know what it is. All right, to the end. I always shout out my brothers. All right, Chaos. All right, uh, Jay. My boy Jay just started a new Instagram page. Y'all get at him. That's my my blood brother, my, my two older brothers. Them for show first. I always loved my mama. She brought us out them apartments. Y'all know what it is. Uh, loved my dad. Taught me this music shit. All of my family, everybody who support me, everybody been rocking with me. Andrew Wallace. I don't even know if uh, me and brother talk on a daily basis, but he one of my fans who be performing. I mean, uh, who been rocking with me for the past three years. And um, last but not least, girl who just calling me right now. Kaya Lee Soup Kitchen, that's my <laughs> baby. So yeah, shout out, big shout out to her. So, um, just everybody who rocking with me, you know, everybody who been rocking with me, everybody who staying to, everybody who commenting, liking, sharing my shit is love. Evans is love. Augusta is love. Humboldt is love. Even my man's right here who put me on with the interview is love. So y'all just stay tuned, man. I'm on some, I'm on some different shit. I'm on some music shit. I'm on my grinding shit, bro. For real. I'm always keep it real with y'all. All right, into the end. Yeah.